So this is investigation 15 guys and this is about testing the buffering capacity if there is any buffering uh, property for some household materials that you use at home. For example, today we are going to use these five. We're going to use Listerine, Diet Coke, tonic water, ginger ale, and lemonade, country time lemonade. Now, I don't care about the brand name, but I care about the material that is inside. Now the material that is inside, I'm going to tell you uh, to go and check it on internet, okay? Because you were supposed to do this yourself, to know what is the content of every uh, household. You know, for a buffer solution, you need to have two main components which are either weak acid and its conjugate base under like salt form or weak base and its conjugate acid now if any of these compounds or any of, any of these products contain mixture of the acid the weak acid and its salt it's going to be buffer or weak base and its salt is going to be buffer now to check whether this, these products are acidic or basic, it's going to be easy for you since you have a pH meter. You can just stick the probe inside some of the a sample of this product and you check what is the pH. And based on that, because today we are providing you of two uh, titrants, we're providing you of 0.1 molar HCl and is 0.1 molar NaOH and for you to know which titrant you are going to use you have to check the pH of your analyte if the analyte is acidic you have to titrate it with a base if the analyte is a base you have to titrate it with an acid right now we have two main objectives first one is that you can identify a solution as being a buffer solution and explain the buffer mechanism in terms of the reactions that would occur on addition of an acid or a base. You have seen this in your uh, chapter 15. Now, a second learning objective is that you can design or interpret data from an experiment that uses titration to determine the concentration of an analyte in a solution. You have done this last experiment. We give you an unknown concentration of, or an analyte with an unknown concentration, and you know the concentration of the titrant, and from the titration results, you can determine the concentration of your analyte. In terms of experimental setup, it's not going to be any different from last uh, week's experiment. So you have your titrant in the burette, you have your analyte in the beaker, as you can see in the zoomed in area here, and most importantly you have your pH meter probe, okay, and the stirring has to be constant stirring. Now every time you add the titrant, you have to check your pH, and of course to answer later on questions, do you have to draw so I'll jump here you have to draw a titration curve and in order to draw a titration curve you need to build in a data table where you have the volume of titrant added versus how the pH is changing now every group of two students will take and I will leave this up to you guys one product from each group. We have two groups here. Group one, we have Listerine, Diet Coca-Cola, and tonic water. And group two, we have ginger ale and country time lemonade. So it's up to you to choose one item from each group. So you will end up doing two titration. Okay? So we're also providing you with a solution of citric acid so you can titrate it and get the curve because 
citric acid exists in one of these compounds. And I will not tell you where. It could be in more than one. And the reason for that is that you, if you have a curve for a substance or an acid or a base that you know, and if you titrate a household a product, if you have the same substance, the curves will be similar. As you can see in here, this is a curve of sodium dihydrogen phosphate, and this is a titration curve of a dishwasher detergent that contains sodium dihydrogen phosphate. And you can see the results are pretty much the same. If you do a titration of citric acid, later on, you can compare your curve to the curve of citric acid and see. Okay? Now, in terms of procedure, as I said, it's not going to be different from the any titration you have done before using a pH probe, and especially last, uh, last week's experiment. The only thing that you have to watch for is the dilution factor that you are going to use. Because if you take a sample, say you want to take 10 milliliter of, of any sample or any product you take, you might need to use 150 milliliter of the fiber. So you have to keep filling your burep. So in addition to, to using a lot of the chemicals that we have in the lab, it's going to take time. So you need to limit your maximum volume of titrant that you are using to 50 milliliters. And in order to do this, you have to, to do like uh, fast tests, okay, on the amount of the titrant that you are going to use. For example, you can take a dilution which is 1 to 10, for example. So you take 1 milliliter of your of your uh, product and you add to it 9 milliliter or 10 milliliter of water okay and then what you do you open the burette and you leave it open and all what you are doing watching the pH when it will jump right when the pH jumps you stop your burette and you look how much volume you have consumed if you see that you have consumed small volume of the titrant, this means that your solution is too dilute. So you need to lower your dilution factor. If you see that you have consumed all the titrant in the burette, which is 50 milliliter, and yet you don't see a jump, this means that you need to dilute it more. Okay? So you have to try this until that you figure out the right dilution factor for you to use. Now, once you know how much volume you are going to consume, you go back and you do a titration, a precise titration by adding one milliliter or two, it's up to you, okay? And record the pH at every step. Now, once you have your curve, later on, you have your data and you draw your curve, how to know which substance you have in your uh, product. You all know that at half equivalence point, the pH is equal to pKa. Now here, as you can see, we're giving you pKa values for common acids. So say I have citric acid, and I see that the pKa at the first half equivalence point, since this is a triprotic acid, it's a 3.1. So I can say, since the pKa at the half equivalence point that I have is a 3.1, so I come here. Which one has a pKa 3.1? So I have the choice between citric acid and tartaric acid. But I can see that tartaric acid is diprotic and citric acid is triprotic. If I have three half equivalence points, this means I have citric acid. If I have two, this means it's tartaric acid. You have to answer later on the questions about is this household product contains a buffer solution or not? And what is the type 
of the buffer solution that you have. Thank <laughs> you.